Hey y'all and welcome back to Skyrim Scripting. This is episode two of our short five episode series getting you set up quickly so you can write Skyrim mods. And if you can't tell, in this episode we are going to be getting set up for mod managers. We're going to be using both Vortex and Mod Organizer 2 in our setup. So let's get started. Um, so to find these, just search for them however uh, you want Vortex Download and Mod Organizer 2 uh, download. For Mod Organizer 2, you might end up on their website, the GitHub, or the Nexus. From their website, you can find links to both GitHub and Nexus. It doesn't matter. Uh, we'll grab it from Nexus. And Vortex, of course, is the official mod manager of uh, Nexus Mods, which has some scheduled downtime. Um, so we're just going to get it from there and we'll download it from the files section. Now, if you don't have an account on Nexus Mods, go ahead and register for one. It'll ask you if you want a premium account or not, and um, you don't need it. That's up to you if you want to support Nexus Mods. Uh, these slow downloads are perfectly fine. Now let me go ahead and log in, and I'm going to uh, download both of these tools from Nexus Mods. And I've logged in for each one of these uh, it's just going to be a manual download. If you're used to using mod managers, uh, you might be used to seeing something like a mod manager download. These are both going to be simple uh, manual downloads. Now, when I kick off these installs, it is going to uh, potentially make the screen go black for a moment. I'll start with Mod Organizer 2. Uh, we definitely want to run this anyway. And throughout the whole series, the screen might go black whenever Windows asks me to click yes or no, and I always click yes. And now this says, uh, it's asking where I want to put this. Um, this is going to be up to you, but I'm going to show you my recommended setup. The most important thing for your setup is that you have a folder on your system, um, probably on C, that uh, is where you're going to have all of your mods, both the mods that you're authoring and the ones that you download and use. This can be separate for the mods that you're authoring than the mods that you're playing with, and I highly recommend that. What I'm going to be doing in this series is I'm just going to make a folder on C drive called Skyrim, and I'm going to put that over on my quick access. Uh, we're going to rely on that a lot. I do in my other episodes. Uh, we're just going to make a folder called Mods. We're going to make a folder called Downloads, and uh, we'll make a folder called overwrite. Y'all Mod Organizer 2 folks may be familiar with this directory, otherwise I'll point out what it does in a moment. Now we're going to have both Vortex and Mod Organizer 2 put all of its downloads in this folder. We're going to have both of them store all their mods in this folder. Now those are extracted downloads uh, or hand created mods. And uh, we'll have Mod Organizer 2 put its overwrite files here. Now my last recommendation is to set up a playing folder. And for all the mods that you have set up for uh, playing, uh, just make a mods folder, and if you would like, it's up to you, an overwrite folder. Um, you can share the downloads between your playing and authoring Mod Organizer 2 profiles, but you definitely want to split out those lists of mods. So now let's kick off this Mod Organizer 2 download again, or you know what? I recommend you start with v Vortex. Vortex is really picky about how it sets up its directories, so run Vortex first. If you already have it installed, just do these path configurations that I'm going to show you, and then you can set up Mod Organizer 2. So Vortex should be launching here in a second. Uh, go ahead and log into Nexus Mods with it. It'll give you this little authorized thing, and then Vortex will pop back up. Um, it says that it will now handle all of the download links from Nexus Mods. Uh, we're going to turn that off so that Mod Organizer 2 in our setup handles those links for a good reason. Uh, first go to Games, and we need to scroll down until you find Skyrim Special Edition. This is the only game I have on this PC because I freshly, uh, freshly reformatted it. You can hit this Fix button if you'd like to. It says something about SKSE. We're not going to touch on that until our Visual Studio Code episode. Now in Settings, um, you might want to install mods when they're downloaded. If you're using Vortex as your main uh, playing uh, thing, which we won't be doing in our setup, you might want both of these on. I like them. Uh, but we are going to set up our mods folder first. So rather than its default mods folder, which is in uh, 
your user, so users, your user, app data, roaming, vortex, sky MSE, mods. And note, uh, you may as well get this set up now. Uh, if you can't in your user directory see the app data folder, it is hidden. So definitely make sure you go to view options, change the file and folder options. And you're going to want to make sure that as a modder, you want to make sure you can see extensions for known file types and you want to show hidden files and folders. Uh, um, Vortex stores its things in app data roaming and mod organizer stores its things in um, app data local as does Skyrim Special Edition. Now back to our folder selection. Choose the folder. I'm teaching you too much. This isn't this is my quick series. I'm supposed to do my quick stuff. Go over to wherever you made that mod folder and select it and then click apply. Don't forget to click apply. And now for downloads, we're going to do the same. Browse on over to wherever you put your download directory and select that folder and it will set it up. It's going to put a little, um, as soon as you use it, let's download something with it. Uh, it will make a Skyrim SE directory. So um, let's actually download something with it just to kick off that directory setup. Or maybe, did we click apply? Aha, click apply. And it'll create this little Skyrim SE folder. And uh, we're almost done with Vortex. Uh, uh, go on over to workarounds and you want it to clean up MD directories during deployment. That's important. And uh, for downloads, uh, we're going to turn off Vortex's handling of those mod manager download links. And now we're done with Vortex. Let's go and install mod organizer 2. Black screen because it asked for me to say yes. I accept. Uh, and now one of the other things we're going to put in our Skyrim folder during the series is a tools directory. Uh, and as I use my PC mostly for Skyrim modding, I'm just going to put tools on my quick access, just called tools. Uh, and I'm going to put mods over there because this is where all the mods that we're authoring is, are going to live. And that's good for now. So back here, what I like to do, you can put it in modding MO2. I like to put it into my Skyrim tools folder under Skyrim tools MO2. Put it wherever you want. You definitely want to keep all these options selected. And once it installs, it's going to ask us to create an instance. Instances are wonderful. We will create one instance for playing the game if you use your PC for playing the game and another instance for mod authoring. And we should be done here. It's going to launch. Um, we're going to create those two instances and then we're going to set up all the paths. So make a global instance, select your game, and just call this something like uh, Authoring Skyrim Mods. Whatever you want to call it. Just remember what you call it. Next. Uh, we'll want to connect it to Nexus. It'll do the same thing, however, it won't pop up Mod Organizer 2 once it's done, so go back to Mod Organizer 2 and hit Next and Finish. And we don't want to show the tutorials, and it'll ask if it should handle the NXM links, and we want it to do that indeed. Um, let's set up its paths, and then we'll make a playing profile. So head on over to that little tool doohickey, and we're going to Paths. And we're going to do the same thing we did with Vortex. We're going to configure downloads, click that little button, head on over to your Skyrim downloads folder and click into the Skyrim special edition folder. That's how Vortex is set up and to make them work well together, it needs to be that Skyrim SE directory in your downloads. And for mods, we're going to configure that as our mods folder, see Skyrim mods. Um, and for overwrite, we're going to configure that as C Skyrim overwrite. And we're done, it'll give us a little nasty gram that uh, do we really want to proceed? And indeed we do. Uh, now go over here and this is your instance selection button. And we're gonna make a new instance and it'll be a global instance of Skyrim Special Edition. We're going to call this uh, something like playing Skyrim. Hit next, next, finish going to reopen into that profile. We can see that it's open here. So 
Uh, my recommendation to you is go into those tools and set a different theme. It can be whatever you want, but just some different theme for your playing. Let's see what the Morrowind one looks like. Sure, I like that. Um, or I'll just do a dark profile. It doesn't matter, but uh, I'll do this for consistency in the screencast. Ooh, yeah, I don't like that part of the Morrowind theme because you can't see stuff. So here we are, and we're going to switch back to... Um, no, we're not going to switch back to mod authoring. We're going to configure the playing Skyrim paths. Go to that little toolbar, go to paths, select downloads, and we're going to let this share the downloads folder with the other instance. So see Skyrim downloads, Skyrim SE. Now we have both instances of this and Vortex all configured to share the same download folder. Now we're going to configure the mods folder as C Skyrim playing mods. And then optionally, um, uh, C Skyrim playing overwrite for overwrite. Uh, overwrite is just where uh, any logs and things like that, we're gonna say yes, get written uh, whenever you're playing the Skyrim game through Mod Organizer 2. And you should play Skyrim through Mod Organizer 2 with this recommended setup because we'll be using Vortex for other things. And now you have both Mod Organizer 2 and Vortex setup. Uh, if we wanted to download a popular mod like Alternate Start, uh, make sure it's the Skyrim Special Edition version. So make sure you always look for Skyrim Special Edition up here. We'll just make sure that our Mod uh, Manager Download button works. Uh, it should trigger this little uh, what we'll say always allow. We want the NXM link proxy. That is the one for Mod Organizer 2. We'll open up that link. It'll say Download Started if you see it there. It'll show up in our Downloads tab. Um, except let's switch instances to authoring. Now we're, we're playing. We're, we're, we're installing Alternate Start for our playing. Let's go over to Downloads and install this. This will install it for our playing profile. So if you were to head over to your Skyrim uh, mods directory, it'll be empty. But if you go to your playing mods directory, you'll now see that alternate start is installed. Uh, now, if we wanted to test that this works, we would have to install its dependency, which is the unofficial Skyrim special edition patch. And we can make sure that our mod manager download works for that as well. And it kicks off with download started. And we can see that the download has finished. Install, okay. Um, fine, we'll enable both of them. And now if we were to use Mod Organizer 2, you have to use Mod Organizer 2 to launch our game. If we were to go to a new game, instead of showing that cart scene, it'll take us to a little prison cell where we can choose our character and we can choose um, um, one of various alternate starts to start the game. And you can see that it's working. Uh, we'll exit the game using the tilde key, which brings up the console and QQQ which is just always the fastest way to exit to desktop from the game. Now that's it for mod managers. Head on over to that next episode in the video playlist where I believe we're going to install the Skyrim creation kit. I'll see you there in just a moment.